great news! You've almost finished your first indie game. That's already a big step in your development process. However, you've been doing a lot of user testing recently and it seems as if there's still something missing. None of your players can really say what's missing, but they just feel like there's something missing. Your game feel isn't there, is what we usually say. And it can be really a big differentiator between an okay game or a good game or even a great game. So in today's video, I wanna go over some of the small polishing things you can do to improve your game and really take it to that next level and make it the optimal experience. Before I go over what you need to do, I quickly just wanna recap, okay, what do I mean with game feel? So game feel, you probably, if you've played a game on your own before, you have some idea, although you just don't know the name of what it is. Game feel is all those small little things that just make it click almost. Think of things like your camera shake or when you shoot a gun in a game, in a first person shooter, for example, you have that muzzle flare, you have that little shake and you also have the accompanying sound effects that really just makes it have an impact. You can also have a game, of course, which doesn't really have those things where maybe the sound effect is badly timed and there's no real muzzle flare or no camera shake. And there's this disconnect then between you playing the game and actually feeling like you're playing the game and you're the character you're playing as. This is a very crucial part in making your game truly be great and something that a player can immerse himself in for multiple hours on end. But sometimes you've just been developing for so long on your main mechanics that you almost forget about these things. So that's why I wanna make this video today to just maybe give you a bit of refresher on, okay, how are my smaller things, my details that truly make my game feel great? And I'm gonna go over some of them and on how you can improve them in your game. These things generally work for any game genre you're making, whether you're making some top-down table card game or you're playing a first-person shooter. All of these um, concepts apply, maybe you'll need to tweak them a bit, but in general, you're free to use them however. The first big thing you can improve for your game feel is tweaking your camera. Chances are that you're not making a command line game anymore. At least I hope you're not doing that anymore. So your player will be looking at the game through some sort of camera. Now, during testing, you probably just point in a camera in your engine and it worked. However, you can actually do quite a lot more with it. First of all, a big one is, do you have screen shake, for example, when a, a building is placed or when you fire a gun or you interact with something? Just having that little shake that isn't really even noticeable to the player, if, unless they're really looking at it, will make a big difference in, okay, it makes more weight to what I'm doing. You also have a lot of filters you can apply to your camera. So for example, you can add bloom, post-chromatic aberration, you can do some film grain. All of these things can also change the vibe that your camera has in your game. Maybe if you're making a noir style game, you wanna really crank up that film grain, maybe do some color correction. Whereas if you want a bright and vibrant game, you would tweak the color spectrum there as well to really fit the world you're trying to build. A second concept that really ties in with the game feel is not just how your camera looks, but how everything in your world interacts. So this is something that we've been doing a lot with our GameForge industry as well, is everything was really static. So we had all of our workstations and you place them down and there was no movement at it. The only movement in our game really were our workers walking around and it felt really rigid almost, which is very much like programmer art level still. Of course, as we're reaching the final stages of our core mechanics, we are starting to polish things up. And one of the things that we've been doing here, for example, is adding just a little bit of animations to our building. So maybe it's some gears that are turning or it's a little um, weather vane that is turning in the wind. These things are very small, but they really bring your buildings and your world to life because you're always, your brain is getting stimulated by, oh, there are things moving around here. And it makes it feel less, you know, cold and dark in your game as you're playing it. Some other things we have, for example, is how our workers are animated, whereas before they just went in a straight line and didn't turn around or anything. Whereas now we have them like slightly bounce up and down and they can wiggle their arms a little bit. So stuff like that also really makes it just that little bit better and more special. You can apply these animations to a lot of things in your other games as well, or maybe even add it instead of animations, use visual effects. For our game, particles and stuff like that isn't really applicable, but maybe if you're making some kind of RPG, you would have a lot of effects, for example, when casting spells, and then you tie that together with, you know, camera shake, for example, to really create more of a weight and an impact of whatever you're doing. 
And then another important one, which we're still also actively working on right now is sound. So with sound, I mean multiple things. I first mean your music. In general, if you have no music, yeah, your game is gonna be quite dead as well. So you'll need something. Now, whether you wanna make your own music or use one of those pre-made asset packs with generic music you can use is up to you. I can't really give you a lot of advice on that one. Generally, you wanna go for custom, of course, but that's a lot of extra work and we'll probably make a future video about that because we're also still struggling with that one. But some other things you really need to do sound-wise is also have sound effects. <gasps> Pretty much everything that happens in your game. Of course, you have the obvious ones, like for example, when you click on a button in your UI, or when, for example, you're reloading a gun. But it's actually about all the things that you don't think make a sound. Or maybe you wanna change just how exactly how does my click sound between my different menu screens. These things also really have a different weight and impact to the things you're doing. And then lastly, something that's also often forgotten is, okay, we've got our music and we've got our sound effects, but we also want some ambient sounds. And that's maybe just like some noise. It can be white noise, it could be wind howling, it could be crickets chirping. The point is to always have something going on to make your world feel alive, even when there's no music playing and when you don't hear any of your workstations, for example, in our case, that are hammering away you still have maybe some environmental sound effects. So maybe there's a sandstorm if you're in a desert level or if you're in plains, you, as I said before, you can hear crickets or if you're Arctic, then you hear the freezing wind gales going through. They should be very quiet, so it doesn't really take up the main attention, but it should be there if the player starts looking and hearing for it. And then we have one last big thing that can really change the way your game is perceived as well by externally. What do I mean with that? How are your controls? In general, you want everything in your game to be remappable. Either it's your mouse clicks or it's your interactions or anything. You want to make it as remappable as possible. Just one, because players can play however they want then. And two, it's also easier documented. You can just go through the controls and see everything that, oh, I can do it. Primary interact, secondary interact, and maybe even a tertiary interact with middle mouse button or something that you wouldn't think about if it's not listed in the controls. And it's also a big boon for, for example, accessibility, as you know, maybe there are people playing with controllers or with different kinds of input devices because they cannot move their arms far enough, for example. And you really make their life a lot easier as well by just having remappable controls. It's not hard to do. You can either implement it yourself, for example, as we did with Unity and our own Unity system, or you can use plugins and third-party tools that can also really offload most of the heavy work for you there. And then going on customization of your controls, you may as well just put everything that you can change in your game a slider. For example, as I said before, color correction, film grain, bloom. By default, maybe you want them on, but maybe some people have color deficiencies and can't really see your game that well. Just make a simple checkbox to turn it off or on. Same goes with stuff like your sounds. Instead of just having one master sound, try to split it up as much as possible. Maybe you have people or streamers who don't really want to play with the music because copyright, for example, they can simply disable the music but still have all the other sound effects. Or they can tweak how loud certain sound effects are compared to each other. You don't want to be blasted by music just to hear your hammering in your forge, for example. So you can tweak those as well. So to summarize, if you feel like your game isn't really feeling perfect. There are a few simple things you can really check. Okay, do I implement these things correctly? That would be, how is my camera? Can I really tweak the way my camera looks visually? How are my visual effects and animations? How are my sound effects? And how are my controls and my customization of my game? Those can really change the way that your game is perceived and also just maybe had some quality of life improvements for your players as well. Do you have anything else that we missed? Feel free to comment them down below would be really nice to hear from you guys because of course we're also still learning. If you're new here, hi, we're a group of indie developers making our own resource management and automation game, Forge Industry. You can currently wishlist us on Steam if you're interested and throughout the development process, we'll be sharing videos like these where we document what we have learned along the way. If that's something that interests you, feel free to subscribe as it also really helps us out and you get this cool content every week. Apart from that, that's all I have to say for now. I'm going back to development and I'll see you guys in the next week. Bye.